Welcome to the Detailers Business Academy and Hawk Pro Detailing, Heber City, Utah. I'm Nick. I'm Ivan. And the reason we're here today, sitting in a Tesla with this beautiful white vegan leather, aka vinyl, <laughs> uh, is to talk about ceramic coatings. Ceramic coatings are really important on the outside of your vehicle. I do want to make one mention of white vegan leather and how gene transfer can really just annihilate it. Yeah. So a good leather coating on the interior, if you're getting the white vegan leather, which I would not recommend, is a big deal. But Ivan has more to say about the exterior of it. Right. So I was asked on my channel, what about coating a Tesla? Do we need to coat a Tesla? Should a Tesla be coated? Well, the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Uh, you should coat a Tesla 100%. Not because their paint is any worse or better than anybody else's, just because ceramic coating should be on every car. Why? Protection, first of all. Secondly, as detailers, we'd like to see the gloss and the beading, but customers don't want to be taking their car through the car washes often. So a coated vehicle is easier to maintain, it looks better, and you'll get a better resale value. I love this visual with the car behind us. I feel like... We're on some kind of talk show. Exactly. Nick, Nick and Ivan travel the country. Well, working on it. It's a working title. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but the idea that someone would ask you, should I ceramic coat my Tesla, leads me to think there's a lot of people out there who are still confused about what's going on in car world. They're spending so much money on cars. Right. And yet there's some really basic things that they don't know. Exactly. One part of the question was, well, it's aluminum. Is that different? There's a lot of cars out there are aluminum these days. And actually, the best-selling vehicle in North America, the F-150, is all aluminum. And it has been for, like, the last six or seven years. It's aluminum, but it has a clear coat. Yeah, so does a Tesla. Right, right, right. So I'm just trying to figure out... We're talking about the substrate? Is that what that is? Yeah, so the customer was asking about the substrate. And the substrate, whether it be plastic, whether it be fiberglass, whether it be steel, whether it be aluminum, really makes no difference whatsoever. Because we're treating the clear coat. And, exactly. And other than farm equipment and the odd white Toyota, everything has clear coat on it these days. So if we're going on the concept that everything is clear coated, what is the substrate in other vehicles? So you've got aluminum and then what about other brands? I, I hadn't even thought about other than if I see a plastic fender flare. You know, I know right. that's different than the, the, the aluminum panel, for instance. Right. And, you know, another example is the bumpers. Every car has plastic bumpers these days. Just made of plastic? It's clear just, coated plastic? Yeah, it's painted and coated plastic. The, uh, the Tesla's aluminum. You have Audis that have been aluminum for a long time. And a lot of cars are going to aluminum to reduce weight. Uh, mm. Some of them, it's just the hood that's aluminum. An example, a Mustang. The Mustang is steel, but it has an aluminum hood and aluminum trunk lid. And Ford has been doing that for years on different vehicles to reduce weight. So steel and aluminum are the primary... Yes. Players in this game, so right. to speak. You know, you Does have one a... get hotter than the other? Sorry, I'm interrupting. Go ahead. No, not at all. Uh, the aluminum is basically just there for weight savings. That's the real important part of the aluminum is the weight savings. Now, the, <clears throat> when you look at other cars, you also have fiberglass. So the Corvette owners out there, yes, you know, fiberglass, again, makes no difference. It's still clear-coated. It's still clear-coated. Clear -coated. Okay. So we're dealing with the clear coat on the surface. We're not dealing with what's underneath it. Like some coating companies, they have coating specifically for wheels. That's great marketing. It That's like saying a coating for a left front fender. Because, again, on that wheel, it's clear coat. But sometimes you want to keep it all straight. Think about the do-it-yourselfer out there. If you told them it was for the left front wheel, they'd probably buy it and organize it like... Yeah, exactly. Like our... And, and, and all love to like a mat or a pan, the organizer. But there's people out there who who want everything to be spelled out from exactly. And if mat or pan, again, much respect, yes. tell them to buy a front, <laughs> left, you know, they'll probably be like, oh, well, okay. Yeah. When I started detailing, I was literally looking for a specific cleaner for my floor mats. Right. And now I know an all-purpose But I literally went to chemical guys and I bought like their floor mat cleaner. Right. So it's not that wild to think that somebody could get marketed to like that. Oh, definitely. And, you know, professional detailers get marketed that way every day. Yeah. So, it, you know, the consumer side of it, yes. But a wheel, unless it's polished aluminum, which then requires a metal coating, is clear coat. It's the same clear coat that's on the rest of the vehicle. The wheel, yes, it's in a slightly harsher environment. 
It's getting the hot brake dust on it. It's, mm. you know, changing temperatures. But still, we're dealing with clear coat. So if you have a fiberglass Corvette from what? I don't know, 20 years ago? Yeah. Were they fiberglass then too? Um, They've always been fiberglass. Always been fiberglass. 53 on up. Okay. See, this is why Ivan's here. Um, can they be ceramic coated? Yes, definitely. Okay. Basically, we're dealing with clear coat. And single stage. See, I just asked you that question. I know, yeah. Now I'm like the guy in the group that we're sort of... Yeah. We're trying to help. But even single stage paint should and can be ceramic coated. How does that work? Does the coating specifically get designed to bond to clear coat versus single stage? It's bonding to paint. And modern single stage paint, like you'll find on, let's say, a John Deere tractor or a Case tractor, is basically pigmented clear coat. Huh. So they're just putting it on in one layer to save money, to save time. Uh, and also, you know, the farm environment is a little harsher than our daily driving environment. So the single stage actually stands up better than clear coat. Well, I've got you here. We uh, polished a kind of a, a deep, rich, cherry, maroon Ford truck. I mean, right. I don't know if it was a 350 Platinum. It was nice, but it was brand new. and yeah. It looked gorgeous. Um, I'm actually going to put a photo on this video just to show people what I'm talking about. Well, in that but case, our... he's putting a photo of a Ram. It's not a Ford. But anyways. Is it? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, not that one. No, no, no. It's a different oh, okay. one. Okay. No, yes. Not the one that's in the shop. There's one in the shop now, but we did this a couple <laughs> months ago. Actually, basically identical color. Yeah. But our pads were getting a little bit of color transfer. Right. And we didn't understand. We're like, isn't this... There's no way this is single stage. This is a brand new truck. Right. So that's the RR paint code from Ford. And the RR paint code is... A candy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, the clear coat is tinted clear coat. You'll get that with the RR paint coat from Ford. You also get it with one of their blues. That the pad will change color because the clear coat is tinted. Isn't that wild? Isn't it awesome to get this insight? Because we were like, we don't want to admit that we don't know, so we don't need to say anything to the customer. <laughs> but we're kind of like humbled that our pads are turning color and we don't know why, but we're still going to deliver an awesome product. I think right. we're good. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't exist in a space where we felt like there was any risk to someone's possession. We do this every day, but, like, right. there was a, hey, I'm always learning, right? But there, that's the humility here. But, like, yeah. there was a, what the hell is this? I don't know. Right. And the RR paint code, if you over-polish it, you'll get a pinkish gold color instead of that deep burgundy. So still be careful. Oh, be very careful. So when you see the RR paint code and it's, you know, this, uh, basically the really deep, glossy burgundy that you see on Ford's. Uh, Mazda has the, uh, I think it's the 27A, which is a very similar color. When they're using a tinted clear coat, it's tinted. The more clear coat you remove, the more tint you're removing. Mm. Therefore, the more of the base you're exposing, therefore the color actually changes. Would burning clear coat look the same on that particular paint? No. It if would, you went it would look all the way to worse. burn? <laughs> oh, it would look worse? Yeah. Okay. It, it's not a good thing. But anyway, so, circling back around, yeah, should you ceramic coat a Tesla? Yes, and if you have the vegan, uh, vegan, the if you have the vegan interior, and again, it's basically vinyl, people. But uh, great marketing on their part to say it's vegan leather. Basically, it's a cow cowless leather, meaning it's vinyl, it's plastic. Yes, definitely, you want to coat that. And speaking of leather. When you buy le the leather option in most cars today, other than maybe a Rolls Royce or a Ferrari or some very high-end vehicle like that, you're actually dealing with vinyl. You're not dealing with leather. Now, there's leather, leather underneath it, but that leather is coated with a vinyl paint. So bottom line here, fiberglass, aluminum, leather, not leather. Plastic. Everything is coated with a clear coat that honestly can coated i mean leather yes. can be coated interior plastics can be coated i've done that on my cars and the reality is if you're going in and out you know the bolster on your yes. on your driver's seat anything with abrasion like a windshield coating will wear down over time exactly but it was going to wear down whether you had a coating on there or not and so i think it's a great idea to do an interior coating inside oh, your car definitely and if you own a vehicle that the interior color is like this very white yeah or light gray or beige and if you have to decide whether you're getting an interior coating or a paint coating, get the interior coating. Really? Because that's the one that is actually going to impact the resale value of the vehicle even more. Because um, if your white leather looks bluish because of your jeans, 
it's not going to be a good, easy sell. Wow. Dropping wisdom bombs with Ivan LaCroix in the vegan leather spaceship. Do you guys like the setting? Should we do more uh, car talk? Uh, uh, this is a nice, it has a, it has a vibe in here. I like it. I feel like we're, we're talking about important the sound things. isn't too bad either. There's so, a nice echo, but a, a dead echo. Anyway, uh, Ivan, thank you for talking to me. I know this is your channel too. Well, uh, it's ours. You know, this is a simulcast. Oh, very fancy. Yeah. Just like the vegan leather. Right. And these seats. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you like the white vegan leather? Comment down below. As always, Ivan is going to be responding to some of the comments as well. So if you're watching on my channel, ask questions. Ivan can answer them. I try to stump this dude, and you just know a lot about... I mean, this has just been your life for how long? 40-some years. Yeah, longer than I've been alive. I'm yeah. 35. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's 17-year-olds out there trying to get in the game, so, right. you know, every day we're always learning. Exactly. And Jason Rosa said that, too. He's learning every single day, and when you hear that from people who truly care about whatever they're doing, their craft, you look at them, and then you're like, oh, that's the that's the game. You just keep improving. You just keep learning. That's That's life, and then you're dead. Yeah, exactly. You know... The day you're not learning is the day you should change careers. Mm. Because if you know it all, you need to start over. Because there's no way you do. No, you'll never, you'll never know it all. I learn every day. I do trainings. I do coaching. And I learn every time I do a coaching session. I learn every time I do a training. Okay. So thank you, Ivan. Uh, we will see you guys on the next video. But make sure, leave the comments below and let us know if you like the white vegan leather. That. And if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, <laughs> leave them below. That's my end ending tagline. And we'll see you at the next one.